Welcome again to the Talking Pictures Podcast with hosts Tony Toscano, C.C. Chambers, and Raquel Baldwin-Horton. Hey everybody and welcome to this week's episode of the Talking Pictures Podcast. I'm Raquel Horton. I am Cece Chambers. I'm Tony Toscano, and with us, our very special guest... Marshall Moore. Wow. Yay. Park City Film Studios. I love how that rhymes. It's like mm-hmm. M&M's, Marshall Moore. It's, well, it doesn't rhyme. <laughs> it just it just, just flows off the it tongue. Has, it it's has familiar. an Yeah, M&M's. Marshall Moore. Everybody right. loves M&M's, right? Are you related to Mary Tyler Moore? No. But I got asked that my whole life. Oh, yeah? By yes. her. I always got asked if I was... Related to the Baldwins, like Stephen Baldwin, Alec Baldwin. And you're not? No. Oh. And I really be. needed to have married somebody. I thought you were. No. <laughs> last name less, so it'd be more or less. Stop more or it. less, yes. <laughs> well, Stop it. my <laughs> wife, Michelle, has my same exact initials. She's Amen. MDM, and I'm MDM. Nice. See? Well, you'd we'll have to change the list. easy to divide the towels. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> monograph everything. Uh, let's talk because uh, if you listened last week or to the previous podcast, Marshall Moore has been uh, involved in film all of his life, um, and as a location director, as a uh, location scout, as a uh, is that a dick? Are you a location director? Location manager. Yeah. Manager. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So you pretty much know every inch of Utah. Every nook you, and cranny. You would think I would, but that's not the case. I find new things all the time that fascinate me. Um, you know, there was a prominent, when I became director of the film commission, I would interface with a lot of other location managers. So I got to see it from the, a different perspective. And one of the location managers taught me a really great lesson about um, what he's looking for. Like he can get on a Google or website and say, you know, we can find your pretty mountains and all that very easily, but I want to know things I don't know. Show me something I don't know. Yeah. Find the details. Find the alley. You know, f- find the thing that's not on the website. Yeah. The you artesian know. well. The artesian well. That's right. Find that back woods church, you know, that's in the yeah. middle of the nowhere. You know, find something that I can't find myself. So the haunted grist mill. Yeah. yeah. All those things that, uh, you know, aren't, aren't advertised in pretty marketing materials. Yeah. Hmm. So, <laughs> I, I, so I, I continually try to do that, is I continually try to expand, you know, you think I would, having done, you know, over 200 episodes of, of a network television series and, you know, 20 other feature films, but the thing is, it never, you never see everything. Yeah. yeah. But, but, but there, are, there are places that, are, are, you, are you still doing that, like when you travel, you're now the, you know, you're in charge of the Park City Film Studios up in Park City. The most beautiful film studios ever, by yes. the way. Yes. Uh, but do you still drive around and go, oh, wow, I never saw this before. And I get out and take pictures. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I share with the film commission, or I share with people and go, you got to see this. this yeah. is... So it happens all the time. And matter of fact, uh, it's happened uh, in, in a way that it's become useful, where somebody will say, hey, I'm looking for, and I'll say, oh, I got a picture of that in my phone. Let me that's send awesome. that to you. Wow. That's, that's so, amazing. You know, uh, years ago, we shot, a, I, sh- I was in a film called the uh, gold runner it was done in fact the losis uh from Polly Losi jewelry they funded it their son was in it and we shot at this place i could never find it again it was a waterfall but it was like out in springville and and you had to like drive and hike to get it but it was the most beautiful place i'd ever seen and you could swim there i mean it was it was just like open but i have never been able to find any location manager that could find me that place again well, and there's maybe a reason for that. I mean, I don't know. Did you have to hike into it or something? A little bit. A yeah. little bit. So, you know, some of the rules you operate with sometimes are can you get a film company into that spot easily? Like smaller companies, they'll, they'll hike back into places. But the bigger companies, they, they're like, hey, if we can't park the trucks and be 20 feet away to the set, yeah, don't exactly. even don't even bother. <laughs> How much does the, uh, uh, the Bureau of Land Management come into this? I mean, there's got to be rules about bringing trucks in. and Well, Utah is 80% public lands, you know, or, or so. Bureau of Land Man- Management's very good to work with, um, but you need time. 
You can't just show up on a BLM property the day before and say, hey, we want to shoot there tomorrow. Yeah. So you, you can do that. You can almost do that with the Bonneville soft flats. They've streamlined the process so well that in three days you can get a permit for the soft flats. But if you go to an area that's not used a lot and they have to do all their studies and the impact studies and all that, uh, you need a week plus to get that done. And, and I'm sorry, again, I'm taking over the conversation for a moment, but our permits, <laughs> our permits expensive to get like because you have so many small filmmakers that don't have any budget and they want to shoot somewhere they should they should are there special prices that's for what i was going to ask like is there a sliding scale based on your budget do you have because like when i uh, was going to shoot out a magna for a uh, proof of concept mm -hmm. for uh, a movie i'm doing right they wanted a million dollar rider that's right that's that's standard. I was like, um, do I look like I have fifteen thousand dollars laying around? Right. That that's standard though. Anytime you say I have a camera and a crew, mm -hmm. uh, you're gonna get that feedback back from the jurisdiction because you've got county, city, you know, you've got public lands. All those have different permits, different structures. And there's not one encompassing governing body of, of film permits. You know, you go into Salt Lake, but most of them do have that requirement. Now, I will tell you this, though. Some of them do have what, you, the, what they call a, a student waiver. Mm -hmm. If you're a, a, a student or uh, under five people on your crew, uh, those kind of things they look at a little differently um, than maybe calling yourself a production company that's making a movie or even a promo or a sizzle reel or whatever. Um, that's where you're going to always start. Like we lost, recently we lost a little work at the studio because we were gonna give the space for nothing, hmm. but we wouldn't let them come in without insurance. And he said the insurance was cost prohibitive yeah. for him to come in and shoot what he needed to shoot. I couldn't let him in there with no insurance, but I could waive the fees. I, I'm not saying I do that for everybody, but in this case, I, I, I was doing it and he still couldn't make it work. But one of the things I know that you can do on that is you can work with other productions and be a sub-production under them, can't you? Or is that only for who, tax who? credits and things like that? For like insurance, can't you work with another production company? Because sometimes they buy, oh, yeah, yeah. They buy insurance? insurance. Yeah, they, they buy insurance for a year for to cover all their productions no matter where they are. And you can be under them. That's why you have that in association with type of thing. Yeah, all they want to be is named as certificate holder and showing an amount for e each occurrence. You know, right. And that's, yeah. yeah. Well, so at the Park City Studios, what is your job there? What are you in charge of? Everything. No. Everything. <laughs> are you in charge of like, uh, bringing in? Well, yes. Like, that's okay. my primary bringing purpose. And, and, and look, there's three of us that work at the Park City Film Studios. There's our stage manager. There's our studio coordinator, our office administrative, uh, and then there's myself. We, we're there daily mm -hmm. um, and with our clients, whoever happens uh, to be in the building. My, my, the primary purpose, my primary job, is to serve a, as a direct marketing uh, agent, so to speak, for, for the studio. So yes, I make periodic trips to Los Angeles. I meet with all the major studios. I meet with all the networks. I showcase the studio in those meetings. Um, and then, you know, now we're to the phase where we've hit most of them over the, the past year and a half, or I've probably made six separate trips, some of those in conjunction with the mm -hmm. Film Commission. What I realized going through this process is that we are directly connected. Everything the studio can possibly do on a large scale is directly connected to what the state does and their incentive program. You've got this big piece of infrastructure that is designed and purpose-built to host large-scale feature films and network television series or subscription type TV series those don't come to the state without some type of tax credit or rebate or yeah. incentive to bring them here we can do other things like commercials and events and and smaller features that the Film Commission works with and, and brings here but to get those bigger bigger shows the incentive has to grow a little bit it has to expand a little bit so that you know, when this current legislation was signed in 2011, there was no Park City Film Studios. There was yeah. no, you know, purpose-built stage yeah. um, for this purpose, and now there is. And that, what we've learned is the studio has the ability in and of itself to attract 
those type of clients, yeah. those bigger network type TV series. So we're able to hook them, yeah. but the thing is we got to land them and yeah. landing them is the tough part. Is the landing, is, is that, is the part that sort of is a hold up, is it the the rules with the commission and the rebates? Because I know, I think it's, for SAG films it's like 75 to 85% of crew talent has to be local hire. Is that where the no, kind of... No, that's all good. That's all good? It's the mathematics of being able to afford it. We don't have mm-hmm. enough in the bank, so to speak, the, the incentive. The Utah rebate is capped mm-hmm. annually at $6.79 million. So you see there's the, the, the estimators at the studios and the networks who look at different incentive programs will look at that on paper and go, well, our show's a $30 million show and we will get $8 million back from this place. We need to look there. Yeah. If we show on paper that we are capable of hosting a network series, you know, over a, you know, a season and maybe do some other projects as well as that network series, then we're more likely to get more looks than we're getting. But because we're, we're capped, yeah. uh, we can do a lot of independence, but what those independents chew up the fund. Yeah. And when a big show comes along, we can't afford it. Yeah. Two, two questions for you, I'm sorry, Cece. Two questions, one is, uh, did blood and oil help or hurt? And secondly is, I know that you do go out to those film conventions and film gatherings in LA and all over the country. Do, does does your appearance there drive business back to Utah? Does it, does it work or? It creates awareness. Yeah. Uh, we got to get out there and promote. Not a lot of people know that there's a, a, a purpose-built yeah. studio in Park City, and uh, so you know, just getting the word out uh, is is really helpful. But then we have those direct meetings where we're meeting with the actual decision makers that determine uh, where uh, production ends up at the end of the day. When they have a script on their desk and saying, "Okay, where we're going to bring this thing?" Is Utah on that list? And we we get in front of them and say, "Hey, we have the facility for you if you you decide to choose." Utah. And, and the blood and oil thing? So, in what way was it good or bad? What do you want well, to know? Because, you know, it, it, it was a great series. Mm-hmm. It, it, it should, you know, I was hoping that it was going to be picked up by uh, CMT or right. one of those sure. Netflix. Yeah. Know. But it didn't. Um, so, it brought in a lot of awareness to Utah. Mm-hmm. But then it was canceled. And I'm wondering did the cancellation have an effect on Park City Film Studios? Other yeah, than losing yes. income. But. Well, that was it. I mean, yes, because we were expecting to have a longer-term client yeah. than what we had. Uh, you know, you get a series in the building, you, you, you think that the network's invested enough in, of time and money in and decision-making into that particular show that they would keep it on more than the 10 episodes that they did. Mm-hmm. I think Blood and Oil was a great thing for the studio because we opened our doors to a network television show filling the measure of what this building was created for and to, to do. Mm-hmm. And so I look at that as, a, as success. We were able to, ho- to host them. Uh, they were able to do what they needed to do with very little difficulty. Uh, the sound man said, you know, this is a true sound stage. Good job, you guys, whoever built it and designed it. Uh, I mean, he 36 filming days in there and uh, inside the building. And he said he only heard one sound bleed, and that was from engine brakes on Highway 40 and that really high pitch. So, so I would think it was a good thing, um, you know. And I think it was for the state too. Like even though, you know, maybe half the crew came from outside of sure. Utah, half the crew came from inside yeah. of Utah. You have to look crews. at that. And that was there was about 125 people on the Blood and Oil cast and crew list, and a lot of our local actors ended up on uh, on the show too, in little parts here and there on episode to episode. So. I think it was a success. There were some difficulties in the production itself. It was a very expensive show to make. What was your exit interview with Don Johnson like? I mean, as, uh, you got, you became friends with him, right? I mean, working buddies. I mean, you work with him every day. I just told him not to pick so many expensive clothes to wear. In the show. <laughs> yeah, can I have that shirt? <laughs> but uh, what did he say about the about working with you in the studio? So, yeah, I, it was interesting because the first time he came to the studio, it was still under construction. And I was involved. I wouldn't say I gave him his first tour, but I was with the group that toured him through his very first look at all the sets mm-hmm. for the show. Because he not only was a cast member, he was an executive producer of the show, too. My interface with Don Johnson was very was minimal but friendly, and he was friendly. Yeah. But, you know, it's, there's a lot of pressure making a big show like that in the network. Is. So does the Park City Film Studio, does it have like a big lot of land attached to it? So like a show like Anthropoid or you wanted to do a war scene, you wanted to dig a ditch 
to be a foxhole. Well, you... let me tell you about our latest development. So, Park City Film Studio sits on about 30 acres in and of itself. Right now, we have three sound stages. We have four uh, office quads that total about 24,000 square feet of production office space. We have a mill and a shop. Those are the buildings. We have 270 parking spaces that surround that building. If you come in the main road and turn to the right, you can look out to another 20 acres of open land. Blood and Oil use that as uh, their back lot, so to speak. They put sets out there. It's not woodland. It's, it's kind of just flat scrub. brush and scrub. Yeah. But let me tell you about a new development as of last week. Okay. You're, we're hearing this first. You are, you are actually hearing this first. Um, for the past few months, I think I can talk about it now, there's been a Western based out of our studio called Damsel. Mm -hmm. And uh, they did not shoot in the studio, although they used our production offices. Uh, and they'll be wrapping. They wrap production in Utah. I think they're finished up their last few days, and then they'll be done. During the course of their production, they constructed a beautiful western town set. Oh, wonderful. Five minutes from the studio in Browns Canyon on the Rogers Ranch. The Rogers family recognized how close the studio was to their property, and we are going to work with them uh, under under a contract eventually. I mean, we're getting on, we're working on it right now. That's it's not signed, but I feel I can talk about it because I've already talked about it to people who are interested in using the Western Town. So um, a nice partnership between you know things coming to the studio and saying, hey, come see this back lot because not only the Western Town is there, they've got 10 square miles of other types of terrain that include wooded areas and scrub and hills, and so that can be added to the. the, the quiver of yeah. what the Park City Film Studios can, can offer. So it's going to be our official back lot. That's so great because you've got Utah and you've got mountains and it looks like a great place you could shoot a western. So to have sort of a western town added. The set is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I have pictures. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Was that the one on History Channel? No, that was the the West. That was done oh, in he right. that was done in Heber before yeah, they yeah, built yeah, this yeah. town. So this town literally they finished like a month ago. So cool. And the owners just said, ah, just leave it. That was part of the deal, yeah, and actually, um, they acquired another set piece. Do you know, Jade, did you want to set a Jade Pendant? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you saw that Western Town? Yeah. They acquired that, too, and they're putting that up. So they're going to have a full, like, maybe three-block Western sure. Town by the time this is all... Well, see, and that's what they done. have in the back lot of Universal Studios. That's what they show you, and it could be any Western Town. Right. You know, just by changing some of the, the names and all of that. Yeah. So how are we doing... You know, I see when we films come to Utah, a lot of the the religious productions hire local actors, um, but then the bigger productions don't hire main characters from here. Right. It, there's a reason for that. It, <laughs> well, no, there's talented actors here. They need a name. Yeah. Right. Attached yeah. for distribution. Well, then yeah. how do you get that name? Give you us a hint. L.A. <laughs> you mean how do the actors get a name for themselves? You right. gotta go to LA if you want to. You gotta be get cast in national but that's shows, what I'm saying. and that does we need, happen. We need more Aaron Eckhart's stuff a great example. Yeah, right. Catherine Heigl. Catherine Heigl. Yeah. But I, I'm, what I'm saying is, if we've got this magnificent studio, is getting grants and stuff for filmmakers that can be pr local productions and. Get names here. No, I'm not saying you know. Well, the problem the problem is, and I, I'm, I'm just speaking in general. Marshall can can you know deny this at all. But when you're pitching a film, the idea is to get the biggest name you can yeah. attached to it. Yeah. Right. To say you know Will Smith is uh, is on board with this. That's how you sell a film. But they get there's a lot of day player roles that are you know the director is in charge, but there's also contractual things that happen that changes how the film is. Develop. But, but there are, you know, actors that just work constantly and they start to build their resume yeah. like David Stevens, Nathan Stevens, Frank you know, Garish, Frank Garish, who's in L.A. now living Kirby here, full time, here uh, the Johnson brothers, the Johnson yeah. boys, um, Char Charlie Halford. Um, yeah, Charlie Halford. Yeah, there's a great example. Right. So, you know, but I know they're not big name stars, but they are working actors yeah. and they're working more. Uh, you know, uh, in, outside of Utah, but they come back to Utah frequently too. Mm -hmm. But I think that's the key: is they have to get well known with the LA agents. Yeah, right. Yeah. And so that's that. That's what you know. You're told as a, as an actress or an actor is, yeah, you need an a, an agent here in, in in Utah. But they're mostly dealing with extra roles. You have to go to LA and have an agent in LA. 
that's that's where the, the movies are made basically right so yeah and and gosh it's great to have you know them hire people out here for a speaking role or whatever but but Marshall is absolutely right you I don't think you're going to get the major role in a film living here unless it's a smaller well unless yeah. it's, it's a, a local, local film independent, yeah, and that's a film. good because you get the set experience then yeah. you get the, you, you get people seeing you I mean yeah it's limited but I think that's a good stepping stone yeah uh, well Paris Warner is starting to get a lot of oh well, there you go she's really talented yeah she's a very talented yeah. girl so that ties me I'm, I purposefully was going into that to bridge into um, networking versus clicks and reputation and I really have a, a, a topic I want to get to um, so how important is it to when you're dealing with someone when you're like look they do a really good job but personally I don't like them or personally I like them but they do an okay job how much does that affect your decision Decision on what? <laughs> like giving them space or working with them both. Oh, through. whether I would recommend them or say, hey, go, right. to, go to them. Mm -hmm. I think, um, yeah, it does. that definitely factors in. Um, I think more of a, in a professional sense than a personal sense. I would still, you know, recommend or, or as long as they're doing a good job prof professionally, mm -hmm. not breaking any ethic codes or morality things in their professional life, I think you have to... To still recommend them, but if, the, if that line hmm. ever crosses, then I withdraw my enthusiasm for who, who for whoever that is. I, I've, I believe me, I saw it when I was the director of the film commission. I saw a lot of strange oh. things, heard about a lot of strange things, got some strange phone calls, and a lot of times I would say to the person who was involved, you know, why did it take you so long? to recognize that this was not a good situation for you. Because they tell me all this thing that's going on for months and months, and I'll say, and I'm being general, I know, yeah. but vague. But you can, you get the idea yeah. that the, the people they're dealing with are not legit, and we're only interested in maybe a couple of things. And, and I'd say, why did it take you so long? Yeah. I mean, their initial reaction is, this isn't legit, but yet they stick with it for months and months, and then in the end, pay the price. Well, and Hollywood is a small town, as big as it is. I mean, I'm talking about the industry. The movie business is a very small town, and there are those people that will have rotten reputations, and, and there's some major actors that, that, that are hired, but everybody knows they're gonna be a son of a bitch to work with. So that's kind of overlooked, but we're also a town where, look at what happened just recently with uh, The Birth of a Nation with Nate Parker. He, he, you know, he's acquitted, Right, but it, uh, came, this, back to but it came back to haunt him. And now people are using it against him to rally cried not to show his movie. Well, if I decided not to show his film, but, you know, like I said, you know, there, there are people that, that deserve that kind of treatment, people that don't deserve that kind of treatment. But it's all kind of how people perceive them and how they perceive all of this, too. There are people that I won't work with, but I don't publicly say that. Right. You know, because I think, uh, you know, that's... You, well, I don't know. You know me. I'm, I'm very much a straight shooter. And I'm, you know, I'm yeah. not... I don't BS people. But at the same time, I, I'm not from here. So when I see something saying that they're putting out a casting call for something, but you have to be Temple re Recommend worthy to be in it, it fuse me. Why? Because... Because you're using it as something to no to to get more people to join your organization. That's not true. I disagree with that. Not that's, all the time. But no, that's not true. Because if the church, uh, you're talking about the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, the LDS Church. Right. They own the production. They can have whoever they want there. Yeah. It's not, the, the, and 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 to, in their eyes, to portray a religious figure, you have to be worthy to play that that role. But if it, it's a sag, if it's sag though. Aren't there Doesn't other matter. equal no. equal opportunity things? That's no, like discrimination. It's it like isn't. Saying, it's the opposite because we believe, as as Americans, I hope you do, in freedom, and you have the freedom not to hire somebody. Too. Not in business. Yeah, you do. 
Not in business. No, you do. You can, you can, I used to own a business, so I know this. You can, you can not hire someone because you just don't like them. It's like, God, you're a dick. I just don't like you. No, that's not what they're doing. They, but you can't discriminate based on religion. It's a film. It's a private sector. It's a private sector. It's a private sector. So as a private. You can set your own rules. Yes, exactly. It's the same thing with the Brigham Young University. It's a private. Well, I'm going to go broader on that because I worked, I worked in LA. One of my first jobs was the Catholic Archdiocese. It's a huge filming thing. Father Manning, I worked on his show, but I was not a practicing Catholic. And so they came to me and said, look, Father Manning happens to like you, but just know that not being a practicing Catholic, you really shouldn't be on this show, but because you do such a great job, it's okay. I mean, that stunned me for the very first time because I'd never heard that before, but it's their ballpark you have to play by their it's their rules. brand so to speak that yes. they are trying to protect if you if you do it in a business sense they're yeah. trying to protect their brand in their opinion that this is who they want to audition for these things well then they, they can should choose do that. internal internal casting so you're saying they put out open casting calls but then say but you have to have a temple recommend like i had an agent Every single thing she sent me was, you have to have a temple recommend. Well, but the, 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 their, the church is asking an agent to send out to her clientele. It's not, not it's your not, agent's bad. They're not, your they're agent not, stops. They're not putting that into oh, the definitely. newspaper and saying... Uh, well, they have know. it on Utah, the Utah hiring thing. They have it on the different... Yeah, but it explains what they want, too. I, I just they don't can, agree. They can do that. I don't agree. Okay, well... I mean, I, I don't have to agree. You don't, well, I mean. It affects crew, too. I don't know if you know this, too, but with the, the crew has to go through the same thing. Um, you know, that a lot of the people that work on the crew, same same policies that they, they have for, for that as well. Like I said, I'm not from here, so yeah. even as a business owner, I would have people coming in with just severe nepotism. And expecting yeah, but things we've that, all done this. We've all said, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I need a redhead for this, or I need this for that. Uh, somebody that knows about dogs. Well, okay, but well, that's that, that's a specific. Is, that's name. discrimination against people that don't know about dogs. If you're a good actor, <laughs> then fine. If it's a talk show, you need a specialist. I'm just, well, Nobody needs to know God to pray to God. No. You see what I'm saying? So I mean, that's just my. Yeah, but to portray him, they, 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 they in their in their. Uh, well, I don't think she cares. Well, what I'm saying is, <laughs> is, is they have an idea of what they want, and they, they will hire that. I don't know. Maybe I'm just really sensitive to it because of our market. There's a lot of religious productions here, which is a good chunk of what's being produced. And then you have all these cliques. Well, well you have the well, you have the LDS church themselves yeah. producing, but then you have LDS filmmakers who don't have that same yeah. criteria. Yeah. They'll cast anybody. That's T.C. Christensen, Adam Abel, Ryan Little, all. The, the Bruffs, huh? Garrett Batty. Garrett Batty. Uh, uh, Foundation for a Better Life. Yes. Those guys uh, will hire. That's different, Grant Baird. Different criteria. So there's one group, yeah, that which is the LDS Motion Picture Studios and, you know, BYU TV, I guess, could be considered yeah, part of that umbrella. Yeah, I think they have the same requirements. Yeah, so, yes, anything church-owned. But then you have the LDS filmmakers who make maybe some religious-themed films, and no, that criteria is not there. church office buildings. You, you, they they require a temple recommend, right? And then they fire you if you got pregnant and you were single. Well, what is that? What, I mean, I know you're trying to be inflammatory here, but there there are businesses. That's my that, job on the show. There are businesses that have requirements. You can't do this. You can't be this. You know, I, you know, I, I believe in ha- hiring the handicap, but you're not going to hire the handicap as a stock person. You. You know, I mean, th- that... If they could put the can on the south, you have to hire <laughs> oh, them. Oh, Lord, we're going to cut that out. <laughs> and, with that, <laughs> and with that being said, uh, thanks for tuning into the Talking Pictures podcast. I hope you get all the roles you want out there without any discrimination at all. I'm Tony Toscano. I'm Cece Chambers. I'm Raquel Horton. And Marshall Moore. And thank you all for tuning in. The Talking Pictures Podcast is produced by Talking Pictures Productions. Produced by CC Chambers. Find us at www.talkingpictures.tv. Talking Pictures Podcast 
distributed by Geek Factor Radio. Also on SoundCloud, Libsyn, and iTunes. Music and sound effects provided by bensound.com. A movie podcast should have more than just drooling on about the recent movies. It should also have stories, background, maybe hosted by an Emmy Award winning movie critic. We have that on the Talking Pictures podcast. <laughs>